Remember when I said that I'd make a video every day? <laughs> well, you know, I was pretty busy last week, and you know how it goes. Once it got to like Thursday, I was I was already out of the habit. It's not a good not a good way to go. Once once you break a habit, it's impossible to get it back. <laughs> but hey, here I am casting Kara Cup number nine for you, which took place you know last week. Um, because like I said, I'm terrible. But anyway, this is going to be a pretty fun match right here between Hottest Man Ever, who is now using Sparrow's colors, which I think is pretty indicative of what he plans to do. Actually, that's not true, though. He's going to go with one production cruiser almost certainly, right? Um, and that's kind of a joke, too. These are obviously not not a total ripoff of Sparrow's colors, but quite similar. Up here in the north, we've got that happy cat. And this is someone who we hadn't seen before. At least I hadn't, certainly. Um, I don't know. He probably has played the game before, like... Uh, Probably some of you are going to know him from 3v3 or something like that, but I'd never really seen him before, so... I'm excited to see what he's going to do, but he's definitely against the uh, the most aggressive player, I'd say, in the tournament right now. Um, I mean, we know Sparrow is a rusher, but he's like a one PC rusher. That's like... That's like even more rush than a normal rush. So, you know. And sure enough, his build going pretty much exactly how you would expect. Uh, as you can see, he's timed this very well. He's going to get up to 600 about the same time the RU's drop off here. He could actually do a quick drop here and get that tech just a little bit faster, but those are small things, obviously. It is early LAV fabrication from that happy cat, which is uh, convenient, but he's going to want to get railgun fabrication pretty much as fast as he recognizes what's going on here. And that's really a big question, is do you recognize what's going to happen? Because um, otherwise he could be in a world of hurt. I'd like to see people, you know, pop a probe out over here, especially when they're against an opponent who they don't really know. Just gives you a good idea of, like, what your opponent is going for. Check the resources over here. Uh, Happy Cat's almost got the RUs for Railgun Fabrication, and that could prove to be essential here. LAVs versus Sandskimmers, we know how this fight tends to go. Um, and this LAV has, uh, did get some high ground right off the beginning here, but the Sandskimmer should be able to peel back do about 150 damage to that LAV. And pretty good micro here from, from Hottest Man Ever. Soul Chip Fabrication, about 20 seconds off. And once that production cruiser is seen, I think you gotta you gotta be ready to play defensively, but you wouldn't know necessarily that it's going to be a Soul Chip with you, so. Um, I hope for the Happy Cat's sake he goes for Railgun Fabrication here, but he very well may not. We'll just have to see. Soul Chip Fabrication finishing just now at the same time as Fleet Cap, which is pretty cool to see. And they'll be on their way, I'm sure. Pretty soon, right? yep, there you go. Um, Happy Cat trying to keep these LAVs alive, trying to keep them far away, but uh, Hottest Man is doing some very nice micro here. Managing, I think, to get two kills now for free, although I imagine he's going to lose this one right here, but he should be able to take an exit trade. Uh, okay, yeah, he will get that. He's cut that very close, but that's alright. But the first Assault Chip is out, and this is when things get difficult. Um, and I think what you... What ought to tell you? Oh, an AAV fabrication is the wrong choice right here. But you may you may not be able to know that, right? What you should tell you that this is happening is that your opponent is still making sand skimmers up here with this production cruiser because LAVs are produced faster. They win in a one-on-one -on -one fight like every single time. There's really no way um, to take like a straight fight with the sand skimmers. You have to like come in and then back away, come in back away, and you don't have the range on them either. So if you're gonna stay there with your production cruiser, that that means like you're definitely going for something funny here. Um. And Happy Cat recognizes, cancels AAV fabrication, goes for railguns, which is good. Uh, and Hottest Man playing this really passively. I mean, I think he could really just run in there and take all this out. That's probably not a problem for him, but... He's giving his opponent a lot of respect here, and again, allow him to extract an artifact before he goes in for his main push as well. Since, uh, LAV's just getting destroyed here, though. And that's really quite unfortunate to see. The railgun fabrication will finish in just a couple of seconds. That artifact gonna score right now as well. So I'd love to see, uh, I'd love to see the hottest man just get a little bit more aggressive here and take out those salvagers. After all, it's not a big deal if these guys die. It's a really big deal if these guys die. So you're definitely dealing with unequal odds there. And railguns are on the way for the happy cat. But hottest man making railguns of his own, which um, I know he, I know he's not a big fan of railguns, but I gotta say this is probably a good move. Um. In case you didn't know, he like hates railguns with some kind of fiery burning passion, so. And he's gonna be on high ground here if he takes the shot right now. They don't have vision, of course, right? <clears throat> Otherwise he probably could have, and I think he'll win this if he just stays up on this high ground right here. Here comes the fight oh. Yeah. It's always a little tricky. Uh, they seem to have gone out of vision of each other for just a second there.
This, I think, is a fight that the hottest man takes cost efficient wise, but he's gonna be outproduced the longer he stays here. I really think, you know, even with the railguns out on the field, like, just move in with these assault ships, man. You can get those kills. Um, but two heavy railguns is definitely gonna do well here. His opponent has got healing from the carrier, so he doesn't doesn't gain anything by waiting, does he? Hottest man really trying to position these guys well. Oh, but then he leaves. Ah, see, I, th I think he had him in a really nice position right there. And actually, refinery mode coming up for him, which is pretty cool. I gotta say, I think that makes sense. You know what I think I would do is move these sand skimmers here off into this direction because they're not gonna really do too much for you right here. Um, I say that because like the LAVs are are not gonna be able to do anything here. There's the soul chips already that are tying them down. You know. Hottest man definitely has traded effectively. You look at the units lost tab, he's lost one sand skimmer, so he's done fine that way. Uh, and with refinery mode, you know, he'll be on a second base and whatever, but I, I really think he could have gotten a lot more out of this by now. And he's also allowed his opponent to extract twice, um, so Happy Cat definitely still in this, and this is a brilliant move right here as well. Just gonna move down there, see if he can harass that second base location. Should be able to get too much done, like, against the sand skimmers, but he can, he can definitely make it hurt for his opponent. Refinery mode is finished, you know, and there's no reason to move the production cruiser if he's already here, right? So he's just gonna start taking his opponent's second base. I love that, by the way. I think that's really cool. And this base runner is gonna see what he doesn't want to see. Crispy bodies by the door, right? Uh, second artifact gets extracted there now. And at this point, I would probably be clicking on powers of one. I think that's not a bad move. I like the idea of kind of stalling for time with the base runner heal there. That's pretty cool, actually. Um, but yeah, I think at this point you gotta go for powers of one. Still no movement up here, but uh, Hottest Man may be saying to himself, well, I mean, if I can just mine off of two bases right here, I can stay at about the same economy as my opponent. And he is making another production cruise right here. That's going to get him actually even a little bit higher than his opponent, right? I think he's lost two salvagers here now. But he's doing actually a very good job of uh, keeping the salvagers away from his opponent there, so... I would be quite pleased if I were him. Um, and obviously the danger with uh, doing this kind of thing where you get a refinery set up and your opponent's second is you have to make salvagers. Um, you can't be making army, but his opponent has not really made too much to uh, respond to him. These railguns will never be able to push out if there are assault ships over here. There's nothing to crack those. So, if his opponent made a... Oh, let me check the resource tab to see if this... Yeah, this is possible. If he made a um, support cruiser, just move his carrier right out there. Um, and his opponent can't push over the dune now because there's like five railguns here but I don't know. At any rate, it looks like he's going to get a third artifact, which is... This is where it starts getting kind of crazy. I mean, these salvagers should have been dead before that first one was picked up, but obviously that's off the table now. I mean, once this third one gets scored, there's going to be so much power in this carrier, it's really just not going to be feasible to uh, stop it. Another wing of LAV is going to run down here. They weren't able to do too much last time. It's always kind of surprising, you know, how well that carrier does in, de in the defense. And it's going to be interceptor fabrication, which is pretty cool to see. And I think the idea is uh, you can take out those those railguns with that pretty well. I think Hodas is trying to figure out what his opponent has got over here. I think that's the idea of this push. And he's going to see, yeah, five railguns, uh, but no sign of a support cruiser. And I think he should be pretty happy with that. What an interesting game. I feel like this is not something we'd see very often, but... I don't need army, I'll just make more salvagers. It's so funny. Oh, man. <clears throat> Interceptor's on the way, of course, from the carrier, and I guess he can make army from over here. No, he's just gonna make salvagers, and he's he's looking to get onto, uh, what would this be? Like, four and a half bases, which is uh, usually a pretty strong position. These three sand skimmers here are probably going to meet their maker. This uh, armor one, it's not. Yeah, no, nothing these sand skimmers have got that's going to keep them in this fight. The assault ships, uh, maybe you can actually save one of them here. No, no, no. No! Oh, look at that, a support cruiser. Hey, this is, this is beautiful. But. <laughs> what? You what, mate? <laughs> no, that's too good. Three out of two, I've never seen that before. Oh, that's hilarious. That's hilarious. 
Here's here's my pro tip, yeah? If this kind of thing is happening to you, you, you need to push him off of here, not try to take this one. <laughs> oh man. That is so funny. Okay, well Railgun's finally gotten to a good position here and uh I think there was potential for Hottest Man to punish their um, their advance out here by moving these soul chips up that side, but he doesn't seem to have seen it. Uh, and this could be pretty bad for him. Um, I mean, he's got eight salvagers over here, you know, so that's obviously not ideal. Uh, but I think he's gonna return the favor and honestly take out the support crews over here. I don't really see what's gonna stop that. Um, Anti-air turret post getting set up here. I like that quite a lot. And that should claim the life of this interceptor here if it fires. Uh, it's gonna get out, actually. That's pretty lucky. Um, but yeah, it's gonna take a while to kill off that support cruiser right there. And there's like air and sand skimmers taking out this one over here, so... This is this is why I wouldn't have recommended that move. Um, and support cruiser anti-air is coming out now, which is good. But I think, actually, it's not. No, no, yeah, because the only sport cruiser on the field is about to die, so... Yeah. Um, <laughs> and from this point, I really feel like it should be pretty trivial. Uh, Honest Man's doing something kind of funny where he keeps trying to build up more and more eco here, but really, he just needs the army now. Um, and also, he can take out this turret post if he wants, but he should definitely not be flying over it with the interceptors for nothing. Because that's gonna... Yeah. Anyway, um, <clears throat> and look at that, the one assault ship over here, you're going to hold off this uh, this attack here. Definitely lost, you know, seven soldiers over there, that's alright. Um, his opponent still is only on one base, so he's kind of okay to take inefficient trades like that. And if you just look at the army count, I mean, yeah, it's not looking too good, is it? For the happy Oh, well, actually, now that I look at that, that's a bit more even than I was expecting, but, um, you know, definitely, I think if I were Hottest Man, I would just make a bunch of heavy railguns and just kind of, you know, take them out, right? This uh, turret post here is also very much undefended, so that can be easily taken out whenever he wants to. You gotta be careful, though, just that he doesn't um, kind of waltz these guys into it, because that often happens. I think it may be about to happen right here, actually. Ooh. Well, I mean, they're actually just getting killed by LAVs, so... And then, yeah, there goes the turret. Oh, it got that one too, the full health one. Interceptors are squishy units. They are very squishy. Yeah, you have to be uh, have to be real careful when you use them. Because any anti-air at all and they're gonna go down like flies, so. Well, second artifact can extract now for the hottest man. He's got quite the sand skimmer force here, and I honestly think he could just run in and start raiding. Well, how many of these? Uh, there's eight of them. I think there's more than eight. Yeah, and there's a couple over here. Uh, he can definitely kill off a bunch of railguns if he wants to. I don't know what the armor is looking like. Yeah, no armor creates either, so that's always nice for you. Um, I would definitely be taking out these anterior turret posts though, because they are pretty expensive and uh, they're they're undefendable, right? If you don't have army over in that position, so definitely should be possible. Oh, look at this split. Well, that is gonna find the anterior turret post, which is nice. Maybe that'll help him realize. Oh, hey, I can just kill this thing. I'm not sure how this thing works, because I feel like it would need to be pointing up, but... I don't know. It's kind of considering this uh, this artifact here, he's kind of playing playing with it. I'm not sure if he wants to take it or not. Yeah, he's gonna decide not to. Let's move off to the extraction zone without it. Um, lots of upgrades coming in for these sand screamers, by the way. I think, uh... Boost? No, Boost hasn't been researched yet, so not many upgrades for the um, LAVs. Sandskimmers is going to come in and clear out this turret post here. I think they're trading a little silly now, though, because there there is army there, obviously. And uh, another thing to note about Interceptors is, first off, like, just look at how fast it gets killed by uh, these these LAVs, even. But it does, like, nothing to Strikecraft, though. The, the problem is that they're very inaccurate, right? So if they're targeting something big, it'll be fine, but if they're targeting something small like Strikecraft, they really can't hit them to save their lives. But uh, the Sand Skimmer counts are looking quite dangerous, and Heavy Railguns are on the way, that's what I would be recommending here. As well as Power Reserves, just because why not, that's a nice late, late game thing to do. And he can snipe probes all day with these things, that's that's true. So, But the number of air units he's lost is actually pretty heinous, I think. Oh my gosh. 
Yeah, I mean, you can look at the RUs there. That tells kind of the whole story, because most all of those, I imagine, were uh, air units. Despite this, he's still very much winning. Don't make any mistake that way. But, um, yeah, I feel he could be doing a lot better here. Just make a whole bunch of railguns. That's all you need. The air units clearly aren't really panning out too well. Just make a whole bunch of railguns. Just, you know, take your opponent out like that. And there goes another one, by the way. Probably victim to support cruiser anti air. Hmm? And this thing is a lieutenant, man, so better be careful. Of course, in Twisted Homeworld Land, the only way you can ever be promoted is not actually being good at your job, it's killing people, so... Uh, and when you have a lot of air units, you'll see a lot of promotions coming down on, like, support cruises and whatever. Railgun's in a very good position right here, but, uh... The Happy Cat is able to move his railguns out of danger, uh, at least from the long-range perspective, but, um... The long range perspective? That sounded really introspective. Uh, I think I think Hottest Man needs more assault ships right now because his railguns are going to be hung out to dry just a little bit, but he did manage to kill off basically all of his opponent's railguns right there, and he, his opponent's still on one base here. I mean, normally we would expect to see, you know, one player's on one base, one's on two. Two is greater than one, you know, but I, I don't know, it's taking a long time here. I think, I think Hottest Man is kind of used to taking out the economy entirely, um, which he could have done this game, but he didn't, so. He's kind of, kind of floundering a bit here, I think. Not in that he's going to lose, but that he he should just have won already, to be honest. Um, yeah, see, there go his three row guns, too. And here come more air units, right? But again, we know we know what the problem with that is going to be. Oh, gosh, what what is this? That would have been helpful in that last attack, right? Um, however, one way that Hottest Man can always win, of course, is just by extracting. He does have two artifacts picked up right here. That would be the game-ending artifact. Um, truly, you cannot win a game of Deserts of Karak on one base. Uh, not unless you, not unless you pull a rush or something like that. And I really don't think, uh, let's face, I don't think the Happy Cat's got anything to deal with this. Um, well, I mean, I say that, but here, here come the LAVs. I think uh, with base runner heal, and you gotta be with your base runner here, I mean, you know what your opponent is doing. With base runner heal, he should be able to take this fight. No! No, don't leave him! No! He's kind of out of position to use the healing now. I hope he doesn't pop it here. This would be a bit counterintuitive. But the LAV is gonna boost out, and I guess that makes sense. They are outnumbered. They would have just died there, so. There you go. I think that means it's game, yeah? Should be anyway. People are inviting me to play the game. Too busy playing the game to play the game, man. I'm sorry. Apparently, Sajuk is watching now. So that's always nice. And I'm loving the choice of bombers here, but I have a feeling he's just gonna run it in there to die. <laughs> Not enough that he wins. He must sacrifice the bomber first, yeah? Go, Harry! <laughs> yeah, he's, he's done for. Well, that's too bad. But we can watch him crash into the desert dramatically, so that's always nice. <laughs> and here comes another one! Here comes another one! You're being immature! <laughs> oh boy. But it's not gonna matter, of course, he will win. So this this bomber here is gonna be spared. This Sirocco. Uh, not gonna fall victim to the support cruisers, but... um. Not because he had any business being there, just because the game was already won at that point. Yeah, I really think uh, Hottest... I mean, this was the first game from the qualifier, it's true. Probably his first game of the day. But still, I'm kind of amazed how long that took. Normally, you know, if you get up onto three... Uh, well, four bases, actually, with your opponent on one, should be a pretty trivial matter of just out macroing them and taking them out. But, but that is A-OK. -okay. He is going to win this round. Let's go ahead and move on to the next match from round one, shall we?